You know, there's three brave men that I have a lot of respect for in this film. But how did the movie actually turn out? My name is Brennan Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for 1517 to Paris. I really do appreciate it. But before we get into the review, help me out by clicking that subscribe button. Also, click that little bell so you can be notified when I make uploads and give me that thumbs up. Let's see if we can get this video to 100 likes. So now we have 1517 to Paris. It is being directed and produced by Clint Eastwood. I'm pretty sure you've heard of him. Um, he's done Gran uh, Grand Turismo, American Sniper, and his last film, Sully, with Tom Hanks. He also was the director of, and I really did enjoy that film. But now he is directing and producing this film, which is based off of a true story and also based off of a book uh, that was written by Anthony Sadler, and the screenplay is by Dorothy uh, Bliskell. And what the plot of this movie is about, what the story is about, is there were three childhood friends by the name of Alec Scarlatos, Anthony Sattler, and Spencer Stone. They are childhood friends, and on August the 25th of 2015, um, they were on a trip on the other side of the world. And I say on the other side of the world because I'm in the United States. Um, over in France, and they ran into a terrorist plot on a train, and they pretty much saved the day. Um, if you did not know a little bit behind the scenes, as Clint Eastwood wanted to get the actual real life heroes to portray themselves in the movie and some people may have thought that was a great idea some people may have not thought that was a great idea and i'll talk about if i thought that was a great idea or not in just a moment but those guys names are alex scarlatos anthony sadler and spencer stone and um when Clint Eastwood was uh, doing the pre-production and he hired these guys and hit them up and it's like, hey, I want you to play yourselves. You know, it was reported that they were very excited and were just kind of just saying like, OK, you know, do you want us to do acting lessons, take acting classes? He was like, oh, no, I want you to be yourself. I mean, you really were in the real life event at the time. So I just want all that to come out on the screen. I think it'll be very authentic. And hey, let's just go for it. And so they went for it. And as far as I mean, I feel kind of like first I want to say is that these three gentlemen right here uh thank you so much for what you did i really do it didn't affect me but i mean i really do appreciate what you did that is very heroic you deserve all the accolades and i give you a ton of respect because the, if the true life story actually if if the terrorist got what he wanted there would have been a lot of hurt and dead people on that train and they pretty much saved the day so i just got to give it up to them And, you know, when we're in this kind of there's a slight bit of action, in this movie, I guess you can say having to do with incident. But when um, me, myself and everybody else, for the most part, when we are watching movies and television shows and certain pieces of entertainment, you know, and there's something going down. We always try to put ourselves, you know, in those people's shoes that are on screen. Like, oh, I would do it like this. I would do it like that. But I mean, would you really I mean, are you the type of person that would go and hide or would you really, you know, go on the front line and try to save the day? Not knocking you either way. But I'm just saying, I mean, these guys really did put themselves on the front line and they saved the day. And I just got to say again that I respect them. Now, at the same time, do I feel that it was a great idea to use them in this movie to replay themselves? Uh, unfortunately, I don't. Um, I feel kind of silly just saying that the acting was bad because they are not actors and that's obvious. But, you know, I have to be honest and talk about how the film was made and the acting was bad. Um, it was, I don't even want to say cringeworthy. I was about to say cringeworthy, but, you know, I don't think that that's fair. Um, but, you know them playing themselves on screen it wasn't that convincing to me at least everything just kind of felt fake um but that's possibly expected the only thing that felt somewhat real was towards the end of the film when they were actually engaged with the terrorists trying to take him down and for his plot on killing a number of people on this plane not on this plane on this train excuse me now when i say towards the end of the movie is this movie is an, uh, 94 minutes an hour and 34 minutes and prior to the the end of the movie where they're actually in the incident the terrorist attack you know we get to see how these guys grew up because they are childhood friends where they met you know and just seeing their lives and their friendship as they go from childhood to uh, young adults and um 
the thing about it is while their acting in this movie was not great what's really bothersome is that everybody else's portrayal and acting whether it was actor or an actress was pretty bad too it's like everybody dropped down to their level and i just don't understand that because you have clint eastwood a great director and a great producer and a great writer in some cases that is behind the camera you know pulling all the strings but everyone, all the other actors and actresses just, you know, drop down to us. I, I just don't understand. I mean, some of these these actors and actresses that you've seen, you know, they're great. You know, you've seen them in other pieces of entertainment before. And they also did a stand up job. But from the very first frame of this movie, I was just like, oh, my gosh, is this what we're in for? I was expecting this from the three main leads, but I was not expecting this from everybody else. There was no situation in this entire movie that felt realistic or genuine to me. Everything seemed like, you know, this was an elementary school play. And I'm not trying to say that to sound funny or crack jokes. That's just honestly how I feel. We meet these three kids um, at a young age at their elementary or junior high school and the teacher and the principal and the lunch people and, and the uh, the counselors and the, their parents. It just all seemed fake in the script that they had to go with was just like it was written in a few hours. I mean, none of the conversations felt real. None of the, you know, interactions or situations or on any front felt real or genuine. And um, I, it's just something that really just turned me off. I mean, the adults were bad. The kids were bad. And one thing that I was really looking forward to is, you know, OK, they are childhood friends and, you know, we get to see them, you know, raising up to adulthood but i was really looking forward to their military training because uh one of them in particular you know he went and wanted to serve in the armed forces particularly the air force and that was the motivating factor that got him to save the day i guess you can say towards the end of the movie but that few scenes was brief i mean i really re i really wish the film would have focused on that a lot more and it did spend a decent amount of time but in my opinion not enough and just like the rest of the movie leading up to the event we get to see them going on vacations and touring and things like that and i'm just asking myself really what does this have to do with the movie or that you know what people are really paying to go see and it has nothing to do with them I, I don't want to see them going on vacation and taking pictures and them going to bars and hanging uh getting hangovers and you know going to breakfast and trying to holler uh, girls and women on boats and things like that i mean that doesn't have anything to do with anything i mean the training that they went through in boot camp and when they was in the army or the navy or uh the air force or whatever that has everything to do with that you know the last incident but all this other stuff is just kind of extra fluff and we're just really boring and daunting and i was just like okay man when are we going to actually get to the incident and what makes it worse is the you know clint eastwood kept giving you little scenes here throughout the movie leading up to that point and that was fun i guess you can say for lack of a better phrase and that's what i wanted to see but it just made it even more frustrating because i was like i don't want to see them going on vacation i want to see this and you're teasing me and then when we finally get to it it was very brief the ending of the movie was the best of the film but everything leading up to that um you know was very problematic and something that I, a film that i can honestly say that i did not enjoy for the most part unfortunately you know especially with them doing something so heroic if i had to rate the 15 to 17 to paris out of a one out of 10 uh i would give this a 4.5 out of 10 yes a 4.5 out of 10 but guys, that's just my opinion. Have you seen the 15 to 17 to Paris or do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. And if you don't, that's fine. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Go to my website, check me out there, bookmarking, and also look me up on social media. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter is right there at the bottom of your screen, and I made it very easy by providing a link to all that good stuff down in the description box below. But guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review for the 15 to 17 to Paris, produced and directed by Clint Eastwood. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.